Hello, welcome back to the channel and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings and we generally like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general and in this video we're going to be talking about a relatively old card game we're going to be talking about cutthroat caverns and in this game you will be playing cards to do damage to a monster in the hope that you will land the final blow and collect all of the points so in this video we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules we tell you what we do like what we don't like and we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not cutthroat caverns is still worth your time or bother today and in the future so remember if you're new here please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment in that section down below and we'll see you after this So, Cutthroat Caverns, how do you play this game? So, Cutthroat Caverns is a turn based card game. First thing you're going to do is you're going to select a character, you'll put the character card in front of you, and then you will take the encounter deck, which is a deck of monsters, and you'll randomly select nine of them and you'll place them face down on the table. You stick the scoreboard on the table and then you'll shuffle the 94 player cards into one central deck and you're basically ready to start so you'll flip over the first card on the encounter deck and you'll look at the monster's health and you'll put a bead on the corresponding number on the score track right each player will then draw seven cards from the deck and this is always going to be your maximum man size unless the game tells you otherwise you're always going to discard down to seven cards so it's important to note what types of cards are in the deck here there's just standard attack cards that will do the amount of damage that's listed on the cards you've got standard attack cards and then you've got special attack cards special attack cards have an icon that is related to a different character and if that character plays that card then they will do double damage and then there are enhanced attack cards which give you an extra load of text to read and implement when you play that card right Got it? There's also tactical maneuver cards. These are what the rulebook calls more strategic moves in the game. Some of the tactical maneuver cards feature the rider ability, which basically delays the action on the card until the next round. So you'll set that card aside as a reminder that you can only implement that during the next turn. And then you've got action cards, which are the blue cards. These have to be played when the card dictates. So if the card tells you to play it immediately, then you will do so, nice and simple. And you've also got item cards, some of which are potions, which will tell you to play the card immediately. You'll put it face up in front of you, and then you'll be able to drink that potion whenever you bloody well feel like, right? On your turn, like we said, you'll have the option of drinking a potion that's in front of you, and you will draw initiative. You'll take the initiative cards numbered from one to however many players you're playing with. You shuffle them up and you'll deal one to each player. And the player who has the number one will go first. The player who has, say, the number four and a four player Game will go last. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to start a combat round. Everyone will select an attack card from the round, whether it be a standard attack card or a special attack card or enhanced attack card. You will have to play an attack card. You put it face down in front of you, and then everybody will reveal their card simultaneously. The player who is first in initiative order will activate their card first. They might do damage or whatever, and then the next player will have a go, and the next player will have a go, and in between turns you'll have to check whether or not the monster is dead. Once everybody's had a go, you'll advance the damage token on the score sheet and then you'll draw initiative for the next round once you've done that it's a monster's turn each monster will have some special rules that apply for that round and you'll have to be mindful of them when the monster attacks the player might attack a specific player that's listed on the encounter sheet or it might just attack a random player but in any case somebody's going to take a bit of damage and if the monster's not defeated then you'll go again so the main twist in this game is that you only get points if you are the player that lands the winning blow right so you've got to be very careful about which cards you play and when and you've also got to sort of try and figure out what cards the other players might have that may lead them to victory if you die whilst facing this monster you're out of the game there is player elimination in this game right and basically you'll keep doing this until you've gone through the stack of nine encounter cards and the player with the most points at the end of the game will be the winner of cutthroat caverns so what do we like about cutthroat caverns so the first thing that we really like about this game is the central mechanism is a really interesting twist. The fact that you have to be the player that lands the winning blow to get any sort of points at all means that you're constantly on your guard 
thinking if I play this 50 damage card, it will bring my teammate and opponent closer to victory. So you don't want to stick your balls in the oven and hand your roasted testicles to your opponent on a plate, do you? Had this just been a case of like being a cooperative game where everybody gets some points, it would have been bloody boring. So it does add a little bit more interest to what would otherwise have been just a generic hack and slash card game, right? So the second thing that we really like about this game is the varied amount of monster special abilities. Some of them are actually quite surprising. So you might end up drawing the wolf pack and it says put a wolf token in play equal to the number of players who start the game plus one. If any wolves are alive at the end of a round add a wolf token and on their turn a player may attack a wolf in play. A player who kills the last wolf token gains an extra two prestige points. This is a monster that will sort of regenerate unless you all focus on it at the same time right there's also the gas bag and this creature does not attack but must be killed if the party is to proceed the player who kills the gas bag is caught in a poison cloud of gas they lose 40 points and attack for half damage in the next encounter so this is like being stuck in a vegan's fart so yeah there's loads and loads of monsters and of course obviously there's loads of expansions which add to the amount of monsters that are available so you never really know what you're going to be faced off against and yeah we really like the varied special abilities and monsters so the next thing that we really like about cutthroat caverns is that it's still supported after all these years right this game was first released in 2007 and they recently released an anniversary edition which i think contains a lot of the stuff in expansions and whatever but there's loads of different expansions anyway there's the deeper and darker expansion you've got the something to do with meat expansion or something or other and uh, yeah there's loads of expansions so if you enjoy the core set then there's loads and loads of opportunities to expand this game beyond your wildest dreams so what don't we like about cutthroat caverns so the first thing that we don't like about Cutthroat Caverns is there's not really that much to link the mechanics of the game to the actual thematics of the game. Okay, you've got a picture on a piece of cardboard for the monster, but essentially it's just a load of bland cards with numbers on them and maybe a little bit of text. So the theme does get a little bit lost along the way. It just feels like you're just totting up different numbers to do damage right and you never really get the feeling that you're actually wandering through a dungeon trying to dodge some of these wacky monsters right so yeah it's not great thematically so the next thing that we don't like about cutthroat caverns is the initiative system is completely and utterly unfair right the fact that you're going to randomly draw your card from a deck each turn means that one two or three monsters in succession are going to target player number two and you're unlucky enough to draw number two you are going to be stuffed it's like being continually picked for that shit team when you was in the playground at the age of 10 it dip dog shit i mean i don't know any way around it toss those bloody initiative cards down the toilet and flush as hard as you can the final thing we don't like about cutthroat cameras is there's not really anything to differentiate each character in the core set if you get the deeper and darker expansion then you do get character abilities that you can use but in the core set the only thing you got is that icon on the cards which then allows your character to do double damage but you may not ever draw any of those bleeding cards right so that is more or less wasted this reminds us of king of tokyo when you cracked that open it looked really nice but you're basically all the same there's nothing to differentiate that bleeding panda from that king kong clone if you're really hot on special abilities for characters and you're gonna have to get the deeper and darker expansion because other than that it's like a load of dressmakers dummies wandering through a labyrinth so to summarize is cutthroat caverns worth your time and bother today and in the future so this is a very very simple and sometimes fun alternative to games like cosmic encounter and essentially it's the same sort of game with that final blow takes a points twist right it can be wildly unfair if you draw those shitty initiative cards repeatedly and it is kind of bland it doesn't really evoke anything in your imagination that makes you feel like you're actually wandering through a dungeon and doing over a load of monsters but having said that this game is pretty quick and it is quite interesting trying to figure out when best to play and there is a bit of take that and it's not enough to destroy the game but those action cards do create a bit of tension in the game so i'm not really sure if we can recommend cutthroat caverns i would much prefer to play a game like cosmic encounter but if you've done cosmic encounter to death but you're still looking for a similar game then cutthroat caverns might just be 
the game for you. So remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that section down below. Hit the like button and all that shit. And we'll see you next time.